my kids are in elementary school, and the uh, the teacher goes peas and carrots, peas and carrots. Kids are fun. This is what I do with my students in my class. Everybody, hold a bubble in your hand. Now, since I have something to say, I want you to take a bubble, put it in that. Alright. How did that feel there, Mike? Enjoy yourself, you relax a little bit. It's good to meet some new people, learn some stuff. You're not the only crazy one sitting here. Okay. Uh, you will, just as a heads up, pretty much every class you take here at College of Social Work, you'll be asked to share that kind of stuff in some context. Why are you here? Why are you social work? What do you want to be when you grow up? And you're going to be asked those questions. As you heard a few of us mention yesterday, um, uh, Jessica, the former student who was here, mentioned as well. You're going to learn and share all this stuff about yourself. Uh, amongst your classmates and your peers, and that's good. But this kind of conversation, and, and one reason I'm giving you the heads up, one is so you're prepared, but also you're gonna feel like you have the conversation a lot, but it's really different people you're having a conversation with. And it's good to share. And it's good also to know that that information changes as time goes by. Now one of the other benefits of a nice little exercise like that in a few minutes, when Dr. Rod Meyer leads you through an exercise in the learning contract, we're gonna, yeah, well, I'm sorry, Jennifer's gonna do it. But you're gonna be asked to get in groups again. Get in those same groups. Because there's a benefit to knowing a little bit about the people you are doing the work exercise with. You've already developed rapport with those people. You already know, probably from, I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hands, but you probably already know from these short conversations who talks more than you. <laughs> who wants to lead the conversation? Who comes from a similar place as you? Who you want to go and have lunch with today? Learn more about? You know? Who sees things through a similar lens as you? You know that from a 15 minute talk. These skills, we say rapport building. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to go to your field placement, you're going to have to see clients. <gasps> clients. <laughs> Report building with clients is the same thing you just did. People like, and, and I'll raise my hand if I'm one of these people, people like to talk about themselves when they think others are listening. Not when they think others are waiting for them to finish. But when they think others are being attentive and listening, they like to talk about themselves. Your clients will absolutely be like that. And so when you ask them those same questions, well, what brought you here today? And you intently listen to their answer. They feel you extending the trust to them. They feel you extending the interest to them. It's very, and now I would say, that I would talk to your field instructor, but I can tell you most field instructors will have this point of view. Yes, I want you to introduce yourself as a student. You're a social work student. And you can introduce yourself that way to clients. And clients love that. I can teach you something. <laughs> Let me tell you about schizophrenia. I've had it for 15 years. <laughs> and that's what they do. And you look at them going, oh, I'm so glad I don't have schizophrenia. <laughs> but that's okay. That's what you want. That's what you want. So, um, I will tell you, in general, like I said, you'll have those conversations in every class. I do icebreakers in all my classes. You heard me say yesterday, I do all the clinical classes, capstone classes. Clinical classes are talking about yourself. We'll learn the theory part later. We're going to start with the talking about yourself. And then we'll explain the theory behind why you said what you said, why I misunderstood it, or whatever. You know, that kind of thing. So, are there any questions about things? Well, the only Oh, uh, that is correct. I mean, with clients, a great deal of that sharing is. So it's easier to build rapport. Um, yes and no. Uh, easier in the sense that you're not necessarily disclosing all this information about yourself. And with different populations you serve, there is a different amount of sharing that you are comfortable with. And I'm putting that very much on 
you. What you are comfortable with. I work at the Department of Juvenile Justice. I work with incarcerated teenagers. You call me lots of, lots of, lots of names. I call my family lots of names. This is why I told I'm married, which I don't deny. I have a picture of my wife and my two children on my desk. My choice. I knew putting that picture there was going to cause whatever. But my comfort level is, and I grew up in a loud Italian New York family. My comfort level is, <laughs> you don't know. Say what you want. That's bottom. Now, not everyone is like that, and I totally respect that. So you have to set your own boundary and your own limit there to what you share. Now, of course, yeah, if you're married and you wear the ring, it's foolish of No, I'm not married. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm married, but you know that's my private life. I'm not going to share about that. And people respect that, and that actually builds rapport because it's a respectful reply. And it's not a, don't ask me any more personal questions. Never again. <laughs> You're just, don't, you know, we're not going down that road. But when they say to you, well, why don't you choose social work? You can answer that question. Can't you? There's no harm in applying knowing that. In fact, it builds a lot of rapport because it's very genuine answer. It makes me feel helped on the client. You have a real interest in social work. It's not like your mother made you do this. <laughs> she might have made you do it, but you know, your mom's cool, so it's all right. But those things do build rapport. Now, when you share with clients, you're right. You have a boundary to establish. But remember, they get a lot of things from you that are okay to acknowledge. It's really all right. Talk with your children, struggle, sure. But be comfortable with what you share. Because clients notice everything. But more than anything, clients want to tell you about themselves. Just make them, enable them to do it. Why are you here today? I have said that to mentally ill people, I've said it to children, I've said it to adults, I've said it to patients with dementia, which you get the same answer every time you ask, but <laughs> it, it's the same thing over and over again. Why are you here? I did work with dementia patients for a group for nine months, five days a week, two hours, same six people. Yes, we had the same conversation 194 <laughs> times. It's okay. Well, it was for a while. I had to leave before my dementia started. <laughs> you do those things. It is, it is really all right to do because they want to be comfortable. And you want to be comfortable. The last thing I'll tell you, and we're going to take a quick break after, is pertaining to your field. And there are all, there's always the, I don't know if I want to be there. Jennifer said this was good. I hear that one a lot. <laughs> Jennifer said this would be good. Okay. What your field will teach you amongst many things your field will teach you. But what your field will teach you in the next two years is not necessarily what I want to do in social work. It's going to teach you a whole lot of skills. And quite possibly, it will teach you what you don't want to do in social work. And that's okay, because you're gaining the experience. I did an internship at a homeless shelter. It is not for me. I wanted to take them all home. <laughs> My mother did not approve. <laughs> so, but I know exactly what goes on there. I know the services provided, which were translatable to other jobs I had. And I also know, when I work with that population, I have to be really good with my boundaries and in talking to my supervisor to make sure I provide the service I should and don't take them home. That's okay too. So, uh, we are taking, is it 15 minutes? 15 minutes. 15 minute break. And then, like I said, you will be asked to get in those groups again, so you might want to get in the same uncomfortable seat. Thank you.
want to sit here anymore, do you?
So I imagine it'll cover those two content areas. And the best way to know whether you need a master is probably going to have you do some sort of assignment around that or essay around discussing those concepts. Because they're going to want to make sure you know what you're talking about. You got to be able to articulate it, right? So that's the difference between undergraduate and master's education is it really is a lot of your ability to be analytical and demonstrate that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of that alarm alarm. Yeah. It bugs me. Bad. All right. Without further ado, it gets worse every time the door opens.